Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be a really brief follow-up video from our singular value decomposition video, where I'm going to tie together the notion of singular values and eigenvalues, singular vectors and eigenvectors. Because I think that it's really helpful to know that the thing you just learned is not some completely new invention of math or stats, but it's basically just a renaming or reformulation for something you already know. So let's start from where we left off, which is that the SVD of any m by n matrix m is given by u sigma v transpose. And we learned that each of these components has special properties. u and v are orthonormal matrices, which means that they contain vectors which are linearly independent to each other. And sigma is a diagonal matrix, p by p, containing the singular values. And also u and v contain singular vectors, both left and right. Let's next consider some transformations of m. So let's consider m transpose m and m m transpose. So these are both valid multiplications, and the resulting dimensionality is n by n in this case, and m by m in this case. So both of these things are square matrices. That's going to help us get into the terrain of eigenvalues now. Let's think about what would happen if I took m transpose m, that matrix, and multiplied it by v. That's what I have exactly done here. So m transpose m, which is the matrix we were talking about earlier, multiplied by v. V, again, being the matrix here, containing the right singular vectors of our original matrix M. So let's just go through this calculation. So we can actually open up this M transpose and M, since we know its literal form right here. So if I were to take the transpose of this guy, I'm going to get V, sigma transpose, U transpose. And then writing M, just as you see it here, we get U, sigma, V transpose. And of course, all that, which is the expression of M transpose M, gets multiplied by V. Now we can do lots of nice cancellations because of the properties we talked about earlier. Namely, this guy, V transpose V and U transpose U, both are equal to the identity matrix because of the fact that U and V are orthonormal. So that's how we get to this step, which is this first V, sigma transpose sigma, which is all that's left. We can do another simplification because sigma is a diagonal matrix, which means its transpose is equal to itself. So really we're just going to have V sigma transpose. It looks like we didn't do anything very crucial, but let's look at this in a different form, opening up V so we can really see what happened. So we see we have M transpose M times V. So this was the original thing that we had written up here, just with the V matrix now written in its full form with all of its P vectors. And what we have on this side, basically if we were to take this sigma squared, which is basically a diagonal matrix where you square each of the singular values on the diagonal, then we can write it in this form. So sigma one squared V one, all, and all the way to sigma p squared vp. So what this means, if you look at this, this is saying that take this matrix times v1 and you get back sigma 1 squared v1. Take this matrix times vp and you get back sigma p squared vp. Which means that v1 through vp are the eigenvectors of m transpose m and their corresponding eigenvalues are sigma 1 squared all the way to sigma p squared. So just to say that in a different way, v1 through vp, which before we were just calling the right singular vectors, can also be thought of as eigenvectors, not of m itself, but of m transpose m. And sigma1 through sigma p, which we were calling the singular values up until now, also we can call the square of them the eigenvalues of m transpose m. So that's this powerful link between singular values and eigenvalues. They're not really two separate entities, but they're linked in this way. And we can do a very similar thing for u. I won't go through the calculation because it's the same. But we get the same conclusion, which is that u1 through up, which again are the component vectors that make up matrix u, are the eigenvectors of mm transpose, which is this other guy. And the eigenvalues are also the square of all of the singular values. And to finish this video, let's just look at this in a matrix form. So we know that m transpose m times v is equal to v times sigma squared. That's literally what we derived right here. So now if we just give these guys separate names, we can call m transpose m just a, v we'll just keep calling v, and let's call sigma squared as lambda. Now we get back the same exact form as the eigen decomposition that we looked at before. So the crucial takeaway in this video is basically that the singular value decomposition and the much simpler eigen decomposition are linked in a very, very intimate way. So if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you next time.